guys, it's Boy Double from Sweden, and in today's video, I am going to be looking at the most expensive CS2 loadout. Now, I made a video pretty recently where I just did the most expensive CSGO loadout, which meant every single skin for every single weapon. But now you see the game has changed because now in CS2 we have the loadout, and inside the loadout, you can only equip these amounts of skins one starting pistol, four four other pistols, five mid-tiers, which means all shotguns, heavy weapons, and SMGs, and five rifles. Other than that, you can't equip any other guns. What used to be, you could have every single gun and every single skin for every single gun. Now, you can only have a skin for each and every one of these guns for the new loadout. Now, before we get into the prices of the loadout, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is D-Market. Now, if you don't know, D-Market is a CSGO trading site and market marketplace where you can trade, buy, or sell your skins safely for real money. For example, if you want to buy skins, you can just sort by best deals, and you'll see the best deals that they have. They've also added a nice new filter section called Unique Items, where you can, for example, check Rare Float Items, which will show you these which have a good float, or Rare Items, where you basically just see very rare items. So just go to Sell Inventory, and when the Rarity check is done, you'll see a little diamond, and that means the market will pay more for your skins. They've also got a bonus blast event right now, where you basically get skins for depositing. For example, you get up to $2 extra if you top up $100, which is very nice. So thank you very much, D-Market, for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to the loadout. In this list, compared to the last video I did, uh, I've actually included stat track skins as well, but I tried not to include any souvenir skins, because they go really crazy up and down in the price, you know? So, uh, stat tracks, yeah, uh, souvenirs, no. So, starting off with your CT side, your starting pistol is either a P2000 or a USP. In this case, the most expensive ones is for P2000 Ocean Foam, $318, but the USP is the clear winner, which is $550. After that, we have to choose four other pistols. Well, the obvious winners is Desert Eagle Blaze, which is $750, then the P250 Nuclear Threat, which is $450. Next is actually the CC Chalice, which which clocks in at $357. And last pistol is the 5.7 Hyper Beast Star Trek Factory New, which is $308. And obviously, the two pistols that didn't make it, the Dual Beretta Duelist, $106. And of course, the R8 Revolver, which its most expensive skin is only $64. Uh-uh. <laughs> Now for, in my opinion, arguably the most exciting category, which is the mid-tier, because there we have the most variety. We are, of course, starting with the Negev Mjölnir, almost $2,000, which is by far the most expensive mid-tier skin you can have. Then, of course, the MP9 Wild Lily, which is actually almost as expensive as the Negev. Then the Statrak FN Emerald Dragon P90, which is almost $910. Then from the Canals Collection, we have the Mag 7 Sinky D, which is $670. Now, for this one, there is a chance the Souvenir Factory New Bulldozer Mag 7 is maybe at the same price or a little bit more expensive. But like I said, I don't want to use souvenirs and I'm not even sure of the sales statistics. So no, Souvenir Bulldozer, you do not make the list. And the final mid-tier skin is actually the UMP Fade non-souvenir, which is $590. As you can see, it's actually quite an extensive list of skins that didn't make it. First of all, the MP7 with the whiteout skin being the most expensive at $420. Then the MP5 SD Oxide Oasis, only $392. Nova Blaze Orange didn't make it either, $133. The most expensive PP Bison is Modern Hunter, which is only $122. And finally, the most expensive XM1014 is Blaze Orange, and it's only $83. That is pretty low. And finally, we have the Rifles, where a lot of the value comes in. Starting it off, of course, the Star Trek Factory New Howl, which is $14,000. Very expensive. Then for the op, we actually don't have the Dragon Lore. No, we have the Factory New Gungnir. $12,800 for the Gungnir. Very interesting. The Gungnir has now overtaken the Dragon Lore. Wow, crazy. Then the Aug is, of course, the Aug Akihabara Accept Factory New, just like in the last list, $4,700 almost. Then we have the new M4A1S Welcome to the Jungle Factory New, which is almost $3,000. And surprisingly, the most expensive score 20 is actually the Splash Jam Factory 
very new, which coincidentally is also my favorite Scar 20 skin. This one is almost $1,250, which is very expensive. The guns that didn't make it, of course, the Scout Death Strike is the most expensive, and that one is $570. And finally, the Famas Waters of Neptis, which is $250, factory new. Now, here's where the real value comes into play. You see the left-hand side here, which isn't even part of the main loadout? Yes, that's where you put your agent, glove, and knife, and there's where the value is. First, the most expensive CT agent skin is Commander Davida Gogels Fernandez, which sounds like someone I would order a mean-ass burrito from. This one's $42. Next up, arguably the most expensive skin of the entire video, the Factory New Sport Gloves Pandoras. These bad boys are $54,000. $500? And by the way, they're listed for way more, but this is actual sales prices. Yes, 54000 What? Then the most expensive knife can either be a butterfly emerald, which I've chosen in this case, or a butterfly sapphire. Coincidentally, at the time of me making this video, they have the exact same price, which is $18,500 each. Then a slight step down in value, we have the most expensive music kit, which is the Gunman Taco Truck which is $23. Quite a lot less than the gloves. The most expensive pin is the Howl pin, which is $59. Of course, here I'm not counting the genuine pins, which some of these could be more. For example, this one. I know it's pretty expensive, but this is the most expensive tradable in-game pin that you can have, so these ones can go fuck themselves. And for the final piece of the loadout, the most expensive Garafiti. It's not the Howl Garafiti. It's not even the Crown Garafiti. It's this one. Weirdly enough, this is the most expensive graffiti that I could find. And I was like, surely that's just because it's listed high. It doesn't actually sell for this. Yes, it does. I don't know why. Maybe it's just rare from a shattered web operation or something. So kind of forgotten. I don't know why it's so expensive. But this graffiti is $34 cash. That's quite a lot. So this is what the actual final most expensive CT loadout would look like. With these weapons and these skins, you are are guaranteed to be a flexer because they are the most expensive. The total combined value of this CT side loadout is $117,254. That's quite a lot of fucking money. But wait, we have not yet delved into the T side. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, our T side loadout is actually looking pretty similar, but it's quite a lot lower in value than the CT side. Most Mostly because of the M4 Howl. Now, the starting pistol, of course, has to be the Glock Fade, which is very expensive at $1,500. The other pistols are looking pretty similar. The only difference, of course, we can't have the 5.7 Hyper Beast on T-side, so we've opted for the Tech 9 Nuclear Threat. Now, this one is quite a lot more expensive at $466, which makes only the pistols on T-side $3,560. Ah, that's very expensive! And once again, the dual Berettas and the R8 did not make the cut. Of course, on T-side, we're dropping quite a lot in value because we don't have the Wild Lily MP9 on T-side. Instead, we have the factory new MP7 Whiteout, which is worth $420. <laughs> and the MP5 SD Oxide Oasis, which is $392. Once again, quite a lot of skins didn't make the cut. For example, the MAC-10 Hot Snakes was only $260. And the most expensive sawed-off was the orange DD Pat, which was only $260. $209. So, uh, no, they didn't make the cut. The biggest difference is, of course, the rifles section, where the only similar skin is the Op Gungnir. Next skin we have is, of course, the Wild Lotus, one of my personal favorite AKs, which is almost $12,000 factory new. A pretty expensive. Then we have to include the Scout Death Strike, which is $574. And the two duds on T-side is definitely the SG553 hazard pay and the G3 SG1 Kronos both within two to three hundred dollars each. Nothing super special there. Our agent of course is Miami Daryl, one of my favorite agents, and he will set you back fifty-four dollars. Just like the CT side of course we have the Pandora's box and the Butterfly Emerald, and since you can't change the music kit, the pin, and the graffiti depending on the teams, if you change on CT they will change on T as well because we only have one for both sides. Now, this is basically what the most expensive T-side CS2 
loadout is going to look like. It's just over $105,000, which is massive, but still $12,000 cheaper than the CT side, which is pretty insane. Now, to make things even more insane, we are going to assume a few things. Let's assume, for example, we have two butterfly emeralds, and let's assume we also have two factory new sport gloves Pandoras. Because as you can see, if we have another pair of gloves and change them, they do change on T side, but not on CT side. So you can have two different pairs of gloves and two different knives as well. <laughs> Which means, technically, we could have two factory new Pandoras and two factory new Butterfly Emerald, which puts the price a lot higher. Basically, all of the skins which are in both teams, technically, I mean, we could have two, one for each team. And that would mean the ultimate flex loadout in CS2 would be... <laughs> $223,000! That is very expensive, and that, my friends, is the most expensive CS2 loadout that you can have. That's quite a lot more than in my CSGO loadout video, because they just revamped the whole system to this new loadout system, which I think is very cool, and I quite like it. So, thank you guys for watching! I'll be crying now, because I keep making these stupid-ass lists, but I don't ever get the skins from them, question mark? Ah!